this is David from uh, Catalina Reviews. It's been a little while since I've done a review or a solar panel project, so I thought it might be time to do one. Um, my initial review and installation was uh, a solar panel from uh, Reynolds G, 100 watt Molly Crystalline solar panel that I had on for about three seasons now. And uh, the only reason I'm revisiting it is in the comments of that video, I had a lot of people saying they had less than great luck with that panel, especially in harsher environments. Um, I myself hadn't had any um, major failures or any serious problems, but we'll take a closer look at the panel and see how it looks over the last couple of years of uh, being in the not-so-harsh environment of a lake on top of a boat's bimini, but... Um, it'll still be a good indication. The other thing that's kind of interesting is Reynolds no longer makes this panel or sells it. It was discontinued and there were a few that were actually recalled because of overheating and fire issues, although I think that was a, a small number. The panel that I'm looking at today is from Link Solar and it is a higher quality bendable solar panel, uh, Molly Crystalline. The ratings are, are essentially the same. Um, it's 100 watts, it, the technology of the individual um, panels is the same, but the actual mounting infrastructure is much different, and we'll we'll go over that in a little bit more detail. Um, this is maybe not a one-to-one a -one comparison because the Link panel is a higher quality panel overall than the than the Reynolds G1 was intended to be, um, but that certainly matters with length of life. The, the question is if you spend a little more money on a better quality solar panel, will it last you longer than having to replace the lower quality ones more frequently? And I'm going to do this as a three-part video. Uh, the first is just going to be this general overview that I'm going to do right now to give you my limited understanding of some of the differences. The next video I'm going to go into details about installing it on a sailboat and how I installed it and how that installation method worked over the three years that it was on my boat and the third one is we'll actually test it out we'll we'll see if the energy ratings are different between the two of them and uh, see how it lasts over time that will obviously take a little longer to do the how it lasts over time because we'll have to wait for time to pass okay let's start off by taking a look at the Reynolds G solar panel and see how it's made out over the years. Uh, this is fresh off my boat from this year. We hauled out a few months ago. And if we get close to the panel, I haven't cleaned it yet. You can see that the panel has, has warped. It's kind of taco shaped, which is fairly common. And it looks like there's a little bit of delaminating in the center um, from the upper surface to the cells. Um, there's some warping and damage on the corners, but in, in general I guess it's in okay shape. This connector, which I was always a little skeptical about, uh, seems to have held up surprisingly enough. You can also notice if you compare them side by side that it's fairly discolored. Um, now, you also have to keep in mind, my boat's in Canada, and we don't have them in the water for the winter, so even though this panel is three years old, it's only been physically under the sun for probably 16 or 18 months, because uh, our sailing season is, is only, you know, five to six months, and then the rest of the time this panel was in storage. So it's not three years of continuous use. Uh, and it also wouldn't be the harshest of conditions. Some people posted in my forums that or in the comments that they their panels lasted much more limited time when they're using them on RVs or vans or situations where they might have branches brush up against them and uh, they could be more easily damaged or for people who expose them for much longer time. This isn't necessarily a knock against the company Reynolds, just this technology of panel in general. They're not the only ones that make it. Many of them use this type of build technique and technology. Um, and there's, I've seen rumors that Reynolds is redesigning their panels, so it's possible they'll come out with the newer style that Link Solar has right here. 
So now let's take a look at some of the differences between the two panels. Uh, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but one of the biggest and most obvious differences is the covering surface that's being used on the panel. It's a textured surface. Uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a golf ball surface. It's not a smooth, um, flat surface. It's dimpled. And um, we'll test and see how this, if this affects the performance of the panel. Um, although we won't be able to do a perfect test as I don't have a brand new panel with a smooth surface. But it'll give us some idea when we compare these two panels. Um, my understanding uh, between the design of this is, one, it helps prevent scratching. Uh, because it's not a smooth surface, you can only scratch the peaks, the valleys won't be touched. So uh, a scratch won't have as detrimental effect on it as a perfectly flat solar panel. So it gives it a little bit more life. Uh, they say it's the, the material is is also a little bit gummy, and they say it's kind of a self healing so if you if you scratch it it's not as obvious even with the peaks and valleys and only the peaks getting scratched so it's supposed to address one of the biggest issues with this style of panel here is is that they're easily scratched, even though my particular one doesn't have many scratches because in a marine environment there aren't a lot of trees and branches and and things like that that can scratch it, but I know that's been a big problem for some people with this style of panel. The other thing of note about this panel from Link Solar is that the connecting mechanism is is looks much more rigid, much neatly, much more neatly installed, and a little more robust. Um, even though I never had a problem with this, some people posted in my comments that they did have problems with their particular one, so I may have got lucky or I just, I don't subject my panels to a harsh of conditions. But this will all lead to how long the panel will last, of course. Uh, they will have a limited lifespan. Other than that, the panels look very similar. Uh, the construction techniques used in this one are supposed to be a little more resistance to, to tacoing like the other one did, um, but only time will, will tell with that. But from a, a looks and a feel and a configuration, uh, you can definitely tell the difference in the quality between the two panels, even if you disregard the wear and tear that this panel has had over the years. Um, this just feels like a panel that is much more substantial. And uh, right down from the, you know, there's no glue sticking out around the, around the connector and then using the more modern materials. Um, definitely make it appealing and certainly sound like it would make it last a lot longer in a harsh environment. Where my environment's not that harsh, I should really be able to get a lot of time out of this panel. Here's a quick look at the backs. The one on the left is the one from Link Solar. The one on the right is from Reynolds G. Uh, essentially the same. Um, I don't see any substantial differences of the two of them on the backs. We'll take a look at the thickness here. As you can see, it's about the same. The Link one may even be a hair thinner, uh, although they're both rated for about the same amount of bend. Uh, you can bend them about as much as, uh, as a large barrel, I think 30 degrees or something like that. In, in my application, they won't be bent very much. Um, they're particularly handy for boats because you can attach them to your bimini or dodger and not have to build an aluminum infrastructure to put them on. And my other video displays that a little better. In the installation video on this one, I'll go over that as well so you can get a better idea of exactly how I installed it. Uh, I didn't go into great detail the first time because I didn't know how well it would work. Uh, so now that we've got a couple of years of the mounting system working fine, including one 50 knot storm that I wasn't able to get to my boat to prepare it for the storm that the panel and the mounting infrastructure lasted just fine. So we'll go into all of those details. So that concludes the first video. Um, I will put links to all the others as they become available. Uh, the, the next one is possible to be more than three. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the next one will be the installation of the new panel from Link Solar. Uh, I'm going to get the sailmaker to add the grommets that are on these ones to match up with the mounting of my existing one. Uh, I may even get them to add a few extra just for additional strength, even though 
the three on either side of my other boat work just fine. It might not be a bad idea to, to go up to four, uh, just so there's less wear points and uh, a little bit more um, strength. So we'll see how all that goes. Thanks for watching.